So the next talk is entitled Hybrid Execution, Combining Ahead of Time and Just-in-Time Compilation. And Christoph Pichler from Johannes Kepler University Linz will give us the talk. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry for <laughs> you broke Ah, ah, thanks. <laughs> Just do what is written there. <laughs> okay, uh, thanks for the introduction. Um, I also want to emphasize that uh, this work would not have been possible without a fantastic team. So my supervisors, Pele Lee, Roland Schatz, Hans-Peter Messenberg, and also the feedback from colleagues. But enough about ourselves, now about you. Uh, welcome to VML and Splash. Uh, how did you get here? Maybe at some point in time you used some kind of root planner and let's just take a look behind the scenes of such a root planner. Um, so maybe from the server we get some kind of XML data with the different options for arrival. This might get passed by a Python script, might use a C library internally and then for a nice web page we might use also some kind of JavaScript so we see that our world is polyglot, and also the work um, I'm presenting now is part of a polyglot project. And all who attended the keynote already know the VM that rules it all, GraalVM. A short introduction for those who don't know it. Um, it's based on the Java hotspot VM, so it takes Java bytecode. Um, there is a really impressive and highly ag aggressively optimizing JIT compiler, the GraalVM JIT compiler, and languages that can compile down to Java bytecode, for example, Java, Scala, or Kotlin, uh, can directly be used with this compiler. Um, for all other languages, so if you want to implement your language um, to run on GraalVM, there is the so-called Truffle language implementation framework which helps you build an abstract syntax tree interpreter or bytecode interpreter very easily. And this has been done for other languages like Ruby, R, JavaScript. I'm sure I forgot a, <laughs> a lot of important languages also. Um, one other language runtime is Squall Python, which accepts Python code. And for C and C++, there is the LLVM runtime called Sulong. And the example I talked before lives in this scope with JavaScript, Python, and C and C++. Also the examples I will show later live in this scope, but our research and also what I will talk next is Sulong, so let us concentrate on how can we actually execute C code. And without GraalVM, you just use a normal compiler such as GCC or Clang, so you have your C code, you, for example, the Clang compiler uses LLVMIR as an intermediate representation, which is platform independent, and then platform specific optimizations can be done to get a binary code. And this can then be executed on a CPU. For GraalVM, the situation is a little bit different. So again, this is the, the GraalVM part from the previous slide um, with the relevant parts now, because I want to emphasize on Sulong. Again, we have our C program, we compile it. For this example, we can use Clang, and then we get LLVMIR and the binary. So it's just uh, one uh, command line option to also get the LLVMIR um, as a file, for example. And then what Sulong does is it takes this LLVMIR and produces an abstract syntax tree, and this is then forwarded to the GraalVM JIT compiler. So this is also a way how to execute C code in this case with GraalVM. And Sulong comes with its own toolchain, which is the Sulong toolchain, creative name. And what this does is that this binary code and the LLVMIR 
are already shipped in one file. So if you use the Sulong tool chain clang, you immediately get this file. And we will see later why this is very important for this research project. Um, in difference to the GCC or to the, the normal Clang run, um, here I want to emphasize that everything above the line happens at compile time, so the Sulong toolchain can be used ahead of time to create the LLVMIR and the binary, and of course, building the abstract syntax tree and then using the GraalVM TIT compiler. Here, everything happens at runtime. So this is also an important distinction here. And this is what we call managed execution with Sulong. So if we execute C code on Sulong, of course, there's also ahead of time compilation involved to LLVMIR, but um, also very important, we have just in time compilation, and this is what we call the managed execution. As you can uh, think, the GraalVM JIT compiler is highly aggressively optimizing, so we get a really good peak performance. And since we also live with the Strafo framework, we almost automatically get poly, uh, the ability to run polyglot applications. So as you can, or as you will see later, it's really easy to, uh, to call code parts of other languages. And it's currently the default way how to execute C code. On the other hand, we have native execution. Um, this has been possible with GraalVM if no LLVMIR is available. And for this, we just take the binary code, forward it to a foreign function interface, and then let it run on the CPU. Here we have um, different metrics, of course. Um, as already said, only if no LLVMIR is available. And as you can imagine, um, <laughs> for the managed execution, uh, the warm-up performance is not really great because there is a lot of interpretation involved. And in contrast to this, here with the native execution, the warmer performance is really good because all of the optimization is done already at compile time. And our approach, also in the title of the presentation and of the paper, is hybrid execution. So we try to combine those two to really get the best of both worlds. So on the one hand, we have native execution with the high warmer performance and we still want to get the managed execution for polyglot applications and to reach high peak performance later on. And we decided to do this on a function level. So for every function, we can decide, do we want to let this function run on the native side or on the managed side? So do we want to rely more on the ahead of time compilation or do we want to use the just in time compilation and the ability to run polyglot applications? And now to the current state. Uh, current, there is no automatic decision yet, which means currently we just have to provide a file to GraalVM specifying which uh, functions should run on the native side and which functions should run on the managed side. Uh, of course, we do not have to list every single function, so there is the possibility of using regular expressions, for example, um, but it is still some restriction and limitation. Um, on the other hand, it's possible to use both kinds of execution uh, in one run. And one, also, one limitation, I will also talk about this later, is that it is static, which means if we start to run one C program or one program, there can be different languages involved. Um, for example, the foo function here is always native. So currently, uh, we don't have a possibility to um, for example, after 100 iterations, move the foo function to the managed side and then execute it on the, on the other side, so to say. So this is currently not possible, but I will mention this at the future work section again. So now to the basic implementation. And for this, I would like to start with a small example with the abstract syntax tree and the binary code. So we just have a simple C function with or two simple C functions foo and bar, and foo is calling bar in our case, so the abstract syntax tree might look like this, and the binary might look like this, of course, with zero and one then. Um, and now let's assume we want to run bar on the, uh, on the native side, so on the right part, which means if, we, if foo is already executed on the native side, we don't have to change anything, but for the left side, if foo is, if the abstract syntax tree is interpreted, 
we want still to call bar on the native side. Therefore, we have to introduce a function pointer to point to the native side and then just link the nodes correspondingly. So we remove the, the call to the managed bar function and just link them. There is also the possibility that we want to execute a function on the, na on the managed side. Currently, this is only possible if, um, if we introduce a function pointer and then call the function pointer. Otherwise, we would have to modify the binary code and the source code, uh, which is something which we, uh, we, which we didn't want, uh, do. Uh, one reason for this also is the, <laughs> the difference uh, in um, the effort and the outcome because we realized um, the, the best runtime win is, so to say, when we take Lee functions as native functions. So functions that do not call other native functions, if you move them to the native side, we have the best improvement currently. And if they call other functions, the callers of the native callers can still be native and the performance uh, still does not lack that much. Therefore, we, we just skip the other direction currently. And now back to our example in the beginning. So here we just have a JavaScript function which creates points out of text, so a small point parser, so to say, with two values x and y. And then we have a C function which takes a point and adds it to some data structure. And the overall listing is a Python program, which of course needs references to the JavaScript and to the C file or to the LLVM file in our case. And then um, maybe it's a bit too small to read in the, in the back, but what is done in a loop here, we just iterate a file line by line, and then we create a JavaScript point out of it. So the JavaScript point is stored in the Python variable here, and then passed to the LLVM code. And short recap, how does this look like with GraalVM? So we have the GraalVM JIT compiler at the bottom, and the language is at the top. And... This is not the end of the presentation. Um, <laughs> there should at least be the language runtimes that appear. Yes, great. Um, I might just hit the, the end button accidentally. Uh, again, with the Sulong runtime, so we have LLVMIR binary in one file, and we can execute C functions on the native side or via the abstract syntax tree and the GraalVM JIT compiler. And what is happening now, if one, let, let us assume Graal Python gets a JavaScript point, what is then done? Um, if the JavaScript point is accessed or written or read, then Graal Python does not do anything with the JavaScript point, but just forwards the access to the JavaScript runtime. So uh, this is also designed such that language specific um, semantics are not violated. Therefore, if an access is happening, uh, it's always done in the corresponding language runtime. And now you also see why we cannot deal with foreign language data in C if we execute it on the native side, because there is no possibility if we are uh, in the native execution to just invoke another language runtime immediately. This only works if we, um, if we are on the managed side and if we are in the Sulong scope still. And this also leads us to a problem I want to emphasize, and for that we look into this C function here, where we take a point and add it to other data structures. So we have a C array, which points to some memory, and then we just add points when we get it in a special function. And for example, the first two points might just be C points, because uh, C, C created them, so to say, or the Sulong runtime created them. However, it can happen that the third point might be a JavaScript point because it just came from another language. And as said before, this must be accessed in managed mode. So we have to prevent that this is accessed from the native side and have to do corresponding actions. And this is also something where memory comes into play. So of course we have a heap for the managed side and we have a heap now for the native side. And if data structures are created on the native side, they live in the native heap, and otherwise they live in the GraalVM heap. However, they might be accessed from both sides, which means we need stops for it. So if we access them on the one hand, we need to forward the access to the other. 
this is a bit more complicated as it's shown here. Um, therefore, I will refer to, to the paper, or please ask me offline. Um, yeah, it's a bit hard to skip a memory part, although the session chair is a GC expert. Um, <laughs> but for now, you just have to, to live with that, unfortunately. And another problem I would like to discuss, it's not, uh, it was not as hard to solve um, as with the memory examples, is the file visibility. Let us just assume we have a static variable, global count, and static in C means it is not accessible from another file. So it's kind of file, uh, file private. And if we now want to access this symbol from the managed execution, we have the stub sends a request address, uh, requests the address of this symbol uh, to the NFI, but doesn't get a response because the NFI says this is a, a static symbol and I'm not allowed to tell you this address because this address has been marked as private. Um, so for example, the, the workaround here was to get two different kinds of information and then combine them. On the one hand, we want to know where the uh, the, mem the library is located, and this is possible to ask, and there we get a response from the native function interface. And the second information we need is, which is also in the symbol table of the binary file, uh, where is this symbol actually located in the library, and then we can just combine these two. So now to the evaluation. How did our work um, proceed? A small, <laughs> a small limitation. I said it before, it's not possible to access managed data from the native side, which means it's also really hard to know in advance um, if a program will correctly run. And the, the best experience we had is with uh, kind of wrapper programs. So here we have a UJSON Python benchmark, which means the basic library is written in C, and on top of that there is a Python wrapper. And by that, we can easily see which functions will access which kind of data. And with the two benchmarks shown here, the programs did not crash, but we tried others first, and then we have the crash situation because uh, native code accesses managed data. Uh, in this case, uh, you see the time on the left. It's a logarith logarithmic scale, and the x-axis uh, are the, kind of the number of iterations. And if everything is executed on the managed side, so this is the default until now for Sulong, which is the light blue line, you see that the warm-up performance is not really good, but the peak performance uh, is the best of, compared to, to the other two runs. The red one uh, the, is where we just execute all C code, which can be run native on native. Um, so here you see the, the warm-up performance is better because we have less code which has to be interpreted in the beginning. However, we also have less runtime information for optimization. The JIT compiler has to do less work. And this is a win in the beginning, but then at the end you see that the performance is not as good as for the managed execution. And for the, um, it's called hi manual hybrid mode here, because we just selected the three functions with the longest execution time and set those three to native and all others were managed. And it was nice to see that we really in between managed and native here. Of course, the long-term goal would be to be uh, on the lower part for, for all iterations. Um, so the message here is it's not really easy to find a perfect way, but you have to change the specifications over time then, which is still future work. And another thing I would like to emphasize is, of course, we tried different benchmarks. And what we saw with the official libxml benchmarks is that the, um, so the libxml benchmark has different tasks within the benchmark. And we also specified the same functions to run on native and to run on managed for every task. Um, and the results really differed. So it makes really a huge difference uh, about the code. So depending on how the code is written and what operations does the code do, uh, the results are really different. So we have cases where, um, so this is then relative. The baseline is the managed execution of Sulong, and we have the relative uh, slowdown, so lower is better of our hybrid mode approach. And you really see um, there are some cases where our hybrid mode approach is always better, which is the red line, 
there are also approaches where <laughs> we are always worse, and there are also approaches where our warm-up performance is better, but then the peak performance um, is not again. And this is only an extraction of four representative ones. I think in total there were more than 20, but then it, it's complicated to see details, of course. So to almost conclude, as said, the future work, um, it would be nice to not having to specify functions manually, but to run them. So a more automatic decision would be nice. So we are currently working um, on the call graph analysis to find a heuristic how to execute a function. And also, as we saw with the new JSON benchmark, the benchmark on the left, it would be nice to switch the mode at runtime. This has two advantages. On the one hand, we can start with more native functions and switch to the JIT optimized functions later on. And the, the second advantage is if we are close to a situation where managed data is accessed from native code, we can try to switch to managed code such that a crash is avoided. And with this, I would like to conclude. So we saw that we live in a polyglot world. We implemented an approach to mix um, ahead of time and just-in-time compilation for a polyglot world. We got some promising results, but we also saw that there is a lot of work still to do. And with this, I would like to thank you for your attention, and I'm now happy to receive questions. Mm -hmm. questions? Mm -hmm. I hope this is really exciting. I've got loads of questions. <laughs> um, here's one, right? Um, if you're making static decisions at kind of function calling granularity, what happens to inlining? I presume that's something you can't then do with your... <laughs> uh, this is a, a very good question. Um, for for this task, we uh, disabled inlining. So for the managed only, we enabled inlining because uh, then the, the numbers from managed are better. But for our hybrid mode, we had to disable inlining. If you enable inlining, it can happen. Uh, sorry for the uh, for the switch. Um, it can happen if you want to have bar on the native side, for example, um, that bar is still on the managed side if it's inlined. So then, so there is no no problem, so to say, but you just didn't receive the expected well, well, really quickly, you <laughs> Sorry, really quickly. You've got these two domains, uh, kind of managed and native. Can you malloc on one side and free on the other? <laughs> this is unfortunately not possible. Um, or it, it, it can happen because what we implemented for the memory approach is sometimes objects have to be transferred from one to the other side. And depending on where an object is located, um, if there is a free call, then it's automatically forward to the, uh, to the correct side. Um, but uh, yeah, this is, <laughs> this is also a, a dangerous operation to move objects from one another because if I want to move a JavaScript point from the managed side to a native memory, it's not possible because... It's a JavaScript point. Yeah. Hi. Uh, Last question. Yeah, I'm curious about how you selected the functions to be on the manager or my, my, uh, like the or native. So, like first of all, how how many, many percentage was on the uh, manager side for the variation, and like how did you select the functions on the manager? And like, would you think if you automate that, would you if, would that improve the performance? Do you think? Um, for the selection, we just let it run with the manage side and the profiler, and just the sampler, and then just took a look how uh, which function does have which amount of uh, execution time. And we usually selected the leaf functions with the highest execution time. So for for most of the benchmarks, it was only um, less than three or four percent, but they had an execution time of 20 to 25 percent, so really high impact. Um, for the native one in red, it was one third of the functions. So it really depends. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I just uh, gave Jeremy a little bit extra rope if he wants another <laughs> oh, Thank you. This is a comment, not a question, right? It seems to me that you're saying, manage native, what should we do? This is ideal for some kind of machine learning based search <laughs> optimization. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. Might look into the future into that. Yeah. <laughs> okay, thanks. <laughs> All right. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you.